Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is International Masters of Give One here, and today we're going to talk about some very aggressive opening idea. Now, it's a variation inside the two night uh, opening, which doesn't have an official name, so I've decided to call it the improved fried liver, or at least an attempt to get an improved fried liver. So the fried liver is basically a very, very opening, a very, very popular, famous opening line. Starts with the move e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6. And after bishop c4, knight f6. Lots of probably millions and millions of games have been played with the move knight g5. <laughs> hitting the pawn on f7 and this is extremely well studied everybody knows basically the right reactions for black here starting with d5 so i thought recommending the fried liver would be a bit too boring everybody knows it i i was thinking about some ideas of how to recommend some interesting lines aggressive lines for club players, online players that want to get some very aggressive gambit style of play from the very first moves. And I was actually surprised by amount of problems that you can pose to black by delaying the move 95 for one move and instead opting for this quick d4 move. So I've gathered quite a lot of information and material for this uh, video and I figured it's a bit too long for uh, for one video. So uh, I probably will divide it into two parts. So basically part one, this is the starting point of both videos, the Italian game. So video number one will be dealing with the move bishop c5 after which we still go for our gambit move of d4 followed by a quick knight g5 this is our general theme of these two videos if you would like to get attacking positions in every opening then i suggest you this amazing course 10 aggressive openings blitz friendly and here i'd like to show you the lessons inside the website if you are logged in then you are going to see this new menu profile if you click it you are going to see this page and then you can click here my lessons from this one you can see your available lessons and if you scroll down you can click here 10 aggressive openings with asaf Givon, with this fantastic author we create together the lessons and you can see here one lesson after the other you can see typical mistakes after that how to start the game correctly the best 10 moves then you can see what are the aggressive openings and then you're going to learn one lesson after the other we have a lot of lessons there and you can create a very solid and strong repertoire with white and black and here you can see two of the three lessons that i already published them on youtube and last but not least here you can you can download the pgn theory on your website you can download the practice the pgn files you can see all of the games online on my website or if you click here on practice pdf then you can see the exercises in the pdf format and you will be available to download this as well you can set up these positions you have a lot of interesting examples in each position from every every single opening i suggest you this fantastic course in order to start correctly in every every single opening the second video will be dealt with the move knight f6 separately after which we as i mentioned go d4 followed by knight g5 so first thing i like about this opening system it's super easy to follow you basically against blaine's uh, against black's two best moves knight f6 and bishop c5 black doesn't really have any other good moves in this position you play the same reaction d4 knight g5 it's easy to remember 
there are lots and lots of tricks that Black has to dodge in order to survive the opening. So let's start with bishop c5. This is the main theme of this video. So first of all, the move bishop c5 is an extremely popular way of actually avoiding the fried liver because in this position it would be impossible to play the move knight to g5 due to the fact that black's queen will just capture the knight and say thank you. So what are we going to do about it? Once again, we are going to sacrifice the pawn, play the move pawn to d4. Now the first thing I was really surprised that even at the grandmaster level this move is extremely little studied so I found um, a really low amount of uh, games played uh, at, the, at the database and even in those games which are already very scarce um, even some grandmasters managed to go wrong and basically I thought that I might even uh, try out this line more often as white after studying the material for this video because there are so many traps that I can try to play in some quick time control games. So first of all the move pawn d4 is very concrete. You attack their bishop on c5, they have to react. Um, so almost everybody that you are going to play against are going to capture this way, pawn takes pawn. But let us address also the other moves. So bishop takes d4 is actually a pretty decent move. It's uh, one of the engine's like best moves. I do believe that you will face it like almost never because people don't like giving away their bishops, especially this bishop on c5, which is usually a very good piece. After bishop takes d4, we kind of have to abandon our knight g5 idea because you will see later that knight g5 is connected with some tactics of knight takes f7, queen h5, queen takes bishop on c5. You will see what I'm talking about later. And this is just not possible. So if we take with the bishop, we should seize the opportunity to just take that bishop away. That's a very good piece to have. If black takes with the pawn, you know, that's just... a pretty bad version for black of capturing with the pawn. Black just might rather play the same position with white knight being on f3 and the black bishop being on c5. Um, in this position white can just castle. There is actually one game at the database uh, which featured a very nice idea. So it's black to move. Black should probably play something very restrained, maybe d6, knight e7, trying to slowly castle. Uh, after which white still have very good compensation, having two bishops, very good position for white. But one game went knight f6, which is such an obvious and logical move, but it's almost a losing move. Um, if you want, you can try to stop the video and try to find a winning continuation for white. So the move is pawn to e5, attacking white knight on f6, and if black captures on e5, we play this typical rookie one move, pinning the knight on e5, and regardless of how black reacts, we can always have the move f4, so for example d6, f4, the knight cannot move on, on the next move, we just win the knight on e5, game over. So you see, Already, by playing very logical moves, black can lose very quickly. So going back to the position after knight takes bishop, black's best move probably is just to take with the knight on d4, after which white plays bishop e3, developing the bishop, attacking the knight on d4, forcing the knight to move again. Uh, knight e6 is a move, but once again, I, I don't think you will almost ever ever in your life will actually see this position so I'm not going to go very deeply in it because there are so many other things to cover I just want to give you an example of what you can see in a practical game so black shot probably most players that you will face will play knight c6 
And now there are actually two approaches to this position. Uh, queen h5 is actually a pretty straightforward move that the chess engines kind of like, creating a very obvious threat of queen takes f7 checkmate, and the plan is just to follow it up with the... So, so for example, queen e7, the engines just want to go for some very positional stuff, knight c3, knight d5, attacking the queen, possibly long castles, again, with very good compensation for white, especially for blitz time controls, I would be very happy to play such a position for white with a lot of activity. But I even slightly prefer the other move, which was actually played by one Polish or woman grandmaster, Monika Sochko, queen g4. So this is a pretty typical idea when black does not have that bishop on f8 guarding the pawn on g7. Uh, you try to attack it because g6 would be a really weakening move. So black should play a queen f6, that's what black played, and the, the one or maybe two games that featured this variation in Grandmaster practice in the entire history. And here white plays a very clever move, knight c3. Kind of looks obvious move, but this move actually sets up a really nice trap, which I think there's a very strong chance that it would work in a practical game. It looks like black is winning with a move d5. Discovered attack against our queen and also hitting our bishop. But actually, this is actually kind of figured out by white. He's just moving away with his queen on g3, keeping the pressure on g7. And after pawn takes bishop, knight d5, suddenly, you, surprisingly, we find out that white is just winning. It's a double attack on the queen on f6 and the pawn on c7. And the queen can basically not guard everything, because it has to stay in defense of the pawn on g7, but it also has to defend the pawn on c7. So it cannot do both, so black has to give up on one of his rooks, either the rook on the corner on a8, or if the queen decides to play something like queen d6, then we have queen takes g7, followed by a quick capturing of the rook on h8, and that's it, game over. So, take note of this position, you you might see it like one or two times in, uh, in your games, especially once again, in, in quick time controls. So d5 is, is definitely a move that your opponents are going to play. Like, I think they won't be able to resist such a, a tempting move. And it also seems like it's working. So in reality, black needs to play something like d6, something more restrained. Engine recommends queen e2, knight e7, and here a pretty... Nice move, knight to b5, hitting the pawn on c7, same fork as we've seen earlier. Black has to play a move like king to d8, which is a very awkward move to make, just losing the right to castle. White can just play long castles, and this is a terrific position to play. Actually, in any time control, I think, uh, a position where an engine says that the position is kind of equal, but you have a lot of compensation, a lot of lot of compensation, a lot of initiative. You can try to take advantage of the fact that the black queen is a little bit misplaced on f6, maybe slowly prepare an f4 counterattack. Very nice stuff. So to conclude, the move bishop takes d4 is is a decent move objectively, like there is nothing wrong with it. But it leads to like a very complicated position where um, black has to dodge lot of bullets and avoid some pretty nasty traps. The other move, which is basically very playable, but also I would say pretty dangerous in the practical terms, is knight takes d4. And in this position, there are, white has two options. Probably like objectively, the best move is just bishop e3, attacking the knight. And if knight takes f3, queen takes f3, that's also like a little trap. Now the pawn f7 is under attack with a checkmate. But also the bishop is under attack. And black doesn't seem to have a very good response here. So after the move bishop e3, 
Night Takes It Free, which is the obvious move, is just losing, almost losing. So Black needs to find some very precise defensive moves to survive in this position, which I think almost nobody will do. But even more of a tricky move in a practical game, if you play quick time controls, is Knight takes e5. The very obvious threat is Knight takes f7. And basically there is no obvious move right now that defends the pawn f7. Knight h6 is impossible because of a simple capture on h6. Knight e6 looks like a move that might look on first glance like it's saving black because it blocks the way for the knight. But in reality, white has a tactical motif that you will see quite a lot later on in the video. Bishop takes knight. This pawn cannot recapture the bishop because we just exchange queens and fork the king and the rook. So pawn takes bishop, queen h5, check. And thanks to the fact that this bishop is under attack, black is in huge troubles. Any move with the king will lead to like a very quick checkmate. Pawn to g6 is also very painful. Typical tactic, knight takes g6, the rook is under attack, the bishop is under attack, everything is hanging in black's position and he's just losing. Very, very nice stuff for white. So basically after the move knight takes d4, you have two good options. Knight takes e5 um, or bishop e3, both are very dangerous in a practical game to face. It's like almost impossible to find the correct moves. I even I can really imagine even pretty strong players having very hard times facing both of these moves. So finally, let us come to the main part of this video, which once again, it's like the most popular move and the move you're going to face most often is pawn takes d4. Now, pawn takes d4 leads us to the main point and the main idea of this whole line, which is to play knight g5. Now the knight is defended by the bishop. And if we compare this position to a normal fried liver attack, we can see that the move pawn d5 that usually is the right reaction in the fried liver is a pretty useless move because white can just take it with the bishop, renewing the threat on the pawn f7. So there is no point in the move d5 anymore. So basically, black has to react differently. So there are two sensible options that you're going to face in your games. Knight e5 is one move, a very sensible move, defending the pawn f7, as well as attacking our own bishop on c4. The other option is knight h6, which is also like the best move and probably also the most logical move. So let us consider both moves. We react, by the way, to both moves in just the same way. Now, please be very attentive right now because the, the tactical motive that you're going to see right now is very important and this is the whole point of this variation without this tactical motive none of the things that we are going to see here make sense it's it's like the main tactical point is the fact that right now we can capture an f7 still even though the spawn is technically defended by the knight knight takes f7 bishop takes f7 king takes f7 Looks like we just lost a piece, but now the black king is on the open field. We play queen h5 check, and this is a double attack. For example, pawn to g6, queen takes bishop on c5, and, you know, this position is uh, of equal material, so basically both sides have same amount of pieces and pawns and everything, but it's pretty obvious that black is in a little bit of trouble because he already lost his right to castle with the king on f7. The pawn on d4 for black is also in a pretty realistic danger of being also lost. So it's already a pretty bad position for black without seemingly making any mistakes. So pretty bad news for black. So to conclude, the move knight e5, while looking very logical, is actually not the best reaction for black. So, the best move for black is knight h6. Knight h6 once again defends upon f7. 
we use the same tactic, knight takes f7, knight takes f7, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, queen h5 check. Reaching just almost the same position as we, seen, as we have seen earlier, g6, wing takes e5. Admittedly, this position is an improved version for black. He has a knight on c6 instead of having a knight on g8, which is clearly a better square defending the pawn on d4. Also, he's better developed, so he might be able to quickly arrange like uh, some kind of artificial castling. In reality, this position has occurred in quite a lot of games via some other move orders also. And it's basically a pretty unclear position, like engines give the evaluation of being close to equal, but once again, why do we care? I am assuming the average like person who watches this video is a club player or an online player looking to have fun, looking to put his opponent out of his comfort zone, and you definitely achieve that. Black has no castling in this game. White has a pretty easy, safe route for his king. He can castle, he can later on try to attack the black king with moves such as f4 and f5. Trying to capitalize on the fact that the black king is kind of stuck in the middle of the board. Also, black has pretty weak dark squares in his camp that once again you can try to take advantage of by putting your bishop on g5 or h6 in some cases. So, I would say, objectively, pretty unclear, complicated position, which in practice, should be much easier for white to play and pretty scary for black, for most players. So, um, this is all about the pawn takes d4. You see, it's pretty easy. There are very few lines to remember, to memorize. Against pawn takes d4, you play knight g5, knight takes f7, pretty much regardless of what black is doing. Against knight takes d4, you have two good choices that we have discussed earlier, knight takes e5 and also bishop e3. And bishop takes d4, we can just take the bishop and enjoy the two bishops advantage, as well as some nice tactics that we have seen in the previous part of this video. So really, really hope you enjoyed the first part of uh, this two part video. On the next video, we are going to be f talking about the move knight f6, the other very important move in this position. Once again, we are going to be playing a d4 knight g5 type of idea. There it will be a little bit different. It's a pretty different position, but this is um, enough for this video. So I uh, really hope that you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video. Here it's time for action. This is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you're going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So. Time for Action is now and you are very welcome to join my mail list.